Wouldn't it be grand if you could take old hardwood shelving like this and turn it into this? Irashamase. Welcome to my workshop and welcome to this Japanese inspired video. My name is Jamie and if it's your first time here, thanks for joining me. I'm an Australian who loves to travel and make things from wood and in this video I get to combine both of those passions to make something amazing for the garden. I've been very fortunate over the last couple of years to spend a lot of time in one of my favourite countries, Japan. That's not me. That's a monkey. Many years ago I worked as a snowboard instructor in Hokkaido, the North Island of Japan. But more recently I've been able to explore the rest of Japan in greater depth. I spent a lot of time exploring Shinto shrines and Buddhist temples and that's where a lot of the inspiration for this video came from. I grew fascinated with these Toro or Japanese shrine lanterns and I took a lot of pictures and videos whenever I came across one. Armed with these reference pictures and some approximate dimensions I took to SketchUp to see what I could come up with. Let me know in the comments if you think I should make some plans available in the future. I've got a lot of great wood that would have been perfect for this project, but instead I used some old hardwood planks that were hidden up in the rafters. Now these planks were warped, twisted and cupped, and nowhere near thick enough for what I needed them for. So I put together a cut list and cut everything down to approximate lengths, making it a little bit easier to work with. This also minimised wastage when it came to the next step of milling down the timber. First I used very light passes across the jointer to get one side flat. Then I sent them through the thickness planer to get some parallel faces. These turned out to be perfectly flat, but nowhere near thick enough, as you can see here. I just want to join pieces of wood to other pieces of wood, do art and buy groceries. Me too, animated Sam. Me too. And Mello. I can hear you barking in the background. You're loved. I've used Type on 3 for all the glow ups in this project as this is an outdoor lantern and Type on 3 is generally water resistant. And this was the first of many glue ups. I must have used over a litre of glue in the whole project. After the glue had dried, I ran everything through the table saw and cut them just a fraction larger than the finished dimensions required. I did this for all the uprights, the cross beams, as well as all the smaller pieces like the rafters, the window frames, anything that was required I tried to do in one go. Then I ran everything through the drum sander to bring it down to the final dimensions and give it a perfect finish. Cross lap joints were used a lot on this project and I did all of these on the table saw with a standard saw blade. I just used a chisel to clean up the rough surface left by the top of the saw blade. Then a bit of chamferization on the end of all the cross beams. Gluing up the cross lap joints was pretty quick and easy and they were all perfectly square once they were clamped up. To 
get the trapezoidal look I was going for for this lantern, I took the uprights to the compound motor saw. Here I tilted the blade 3 degrees, as well as rotating at 3 degrees, to give that offset cut. Then it was just a matter of measuring the inside corner of each upright, sliding the piece along until I was at the right point, and then cutting the same angled cut. Then it was just rinse and repeat. At this stage I decided to magnetise the windows so that I could easily remove them for cleaning or to change the light or whatever I needed to do. Here I'm adding 6mm rare earth magnets to the window frames. I mixed up a little bit of 5 minute 2 part epoxy to hold these in place. When I attached these frames to the inner sides of the uprights, I realised that blue tape was also going to be my major friend on this project. Made it a lot easier to clean up the glue squeeze out, as well as using these plastic straws that I picked up last time I was in Japan. You can't get plastic straws in Australia anymore, so I keep a stack on hand just for this reason, just to clean up the glue. Once everything was dry, it still needed a little bit of a clean up, but nothing like it would have needed if I hadn't have used the tape. Time to assemble and once again, blue tape everywhere. This was a godsend for this part of the project especially. Once everything was glued, squared, checked and double checked, I just put some weight on top to hold it all in place. Once everything was dry, I did actually decide to put some hardware in from the top down and the bottom up, just to hold everything together. I'm fairly confident that the glue would have held this securely anyway, but this is just an added bit of security. As this is a very hard, dense wood, I used a little bit of oil to help lubricate the screws as it went into the timber. Also, planning for the future, I want to bolt this whole lantern to the post that it'll be standing on, so I added some 10mm inserts to the base. You'll see how this works later in the video. I then added two small standoffs for the top cross beam to attach to down the track. Then it was the first time on this project to properly enter Sandman. It's a very awkward project to sand and later on you'll see how I sand in close to the corners. The angle from the top of this crossbeam down to the outer sides of the lantern is 19 and a half degrees. So I had to flip my fence onto the other side of the blade to be able to get this perfect cut. A little bit tricky. Now originally when I designed these window frames, I wanted mitered corners. With a combination of the compound angles and the fact that the window frames are all trapezoidal shaped, not only was this very dangerous to cut, but I just found it very, very challenging to get it perfect and accurate. So I ended up changing tact. I cut three degree edges off the top and bottom cross pieces. Then I used the same technique that I used for the lantern uprights for the window frame uprights.
And when putting them in place, if I flip them once and twist them once, these prove to be a perfect fit. I don't have footage of me putting this together, but you can see here a glued up frame with magnets installed. The top and bottoms are not perfectly flush with the rest of the frame, but this is the back, so it doesn't actually matter. Now on to cutting the slats for the Kumiko joinery, or the wood slats that give the windows some visual appeal. Once again, I cut everything here a little bit oversized, then ran everything through the drum sander on a sled. I ended up with a stack of very precise 8 by 5 mil strips. Putting these pieces together was manual and tedious, but with the help of a Japanese pull saw and a very fine chisel, it went like a breeze. Then it was just a matter of measuring everything out the way I wanted it, and cutting each piece individually to get it in the perfect fit. The window frames are each 24mm thick, and the slats are all 8mm thick, so I used this piece of white scrap masonite, which is also 8mm thick, to offset the right distance. Then came the tricky job of gluing each of the pieces in place, starting with the outer frames and working across to the cross pieces. At the end, I once again applied weight just to help it dry. While that was drying, I went to the laser and cut out some 3mm clear acrylic. You don't need a laser for this, you could run this through the table saw. It just made it a lot easier for me to use this tool as I got it on hand. I used acrylic here to protect the rice paper from the elements. So I stick the rice paper onto one of the sheets and then sandwich it between another piece to protect it. If I were to use this lantern indoors, I would rearrange the acrylic sheets so that the rice paper was touching the wood and backed by the second piece of acrylic instead. I used the Forstner bit to drill a small hole, then used small screws and washers to hold the acrylic pieces firmly in place. Now onto the roof rafters. Cutting the cross pieces at 19 and a half degrees. I created a small jig that I could glue up two sets of rafters at a time, clamping one side first, gluing the second pieces together, and then clamping them into position until they dried. After an hour or so, they were dry enough that I could replace them with a new set. 16 sets, so it took about 8 hours. I use the laser once again to get the curvature of the front facade and here I'm using them as a template to show which parts of the cross beams need to be cut away to accept the front facades. Once again a pull saw and a slightly bigger chisel and I was able to chisel away the front sections here. There was a slight curve, so I used a very fine chisel to be able to give that rounded edge.
I also decided to embed four of the rafters into the cross beams as the rest of the rafters just sit on the top of that cross beam, not actually attached at all. And here I'm just chiseling away that material so I can just glue and slot one of those rafters in place. All the other rafters are offset the width of a rafter and only glued to the top cross piece. Finding some more timber for the front facades, I went through the same process of cutting, planing and prepping, ready for the next step. Once again to the laser, I cut out some templates from acrylic. I only had some three millimeter acrylic on hand, so that's why I'm stacking them up to give me some extra thickness. This is a two part template, and I'll show you why in a second. First to the bandsaw, I just remove most of the waste from the outside. Then with a flush trim bit, I squared them up to the template. This is where I had my first real issue. No matter what I did on this timber, I had some pretty serious tear outs. So for now, I'm leaving it and I'm gonna come up with a new solution. Here I've removed half of the template and I'm taking five millimeters of wood away from the bottom half of this piece, giving the impression that I've used two pieces of wood. However, it's all one piece continual. Not the cleanest finished, so I used a chisel and some sandpaper to clean it all up afterwards. Here I'm just cutting the desired pattern out of the ends of the pieces. Before cleaning up with a chisel. Now you can see tear out in both sides of these pieces of wood. So I traced a small pattern that I could cut away with the bandsaw. Taking some parts left over from a recycled old coffee table, I cut them down into thin strips and put them in boiling water, allowing me to bend them around the shapes that I want to form. This is just a slow process of bend a little bit, reboil, bend a little bit, reboil, until I get the shape that I want. Once the shape had held true, I was able to glue those pieces to the edges of my front facades.
Once dry, I was able to use a combination of a hand plane, card scraper, and some sandpaper just to flush up the faces. Then I could reapply the templates and use the flush trim bit to bring it back to the original size. The angles where the two facades join in the centre are a bit awkward and to cut them safely I use this table saw sled. As a side project I'd prepared some panels from some old floorboards. Here I'm just flattening down the panel with a hand plane before using an electric sander to clean things up. Once again using the 19 and a half degree angle to cut the top spine of the roof. And for projects like this, I'm glad I've got such a large reach on my sliding miter saw. Here I'm trimming down two smaller pieces to create the ridge cap for the top of the roof. A bit more blue tape, glue and straws, and the ridge cap comes together. At this point, I finally get to see what it's going to look like when it's finished. Here I'm knocking up a cross piece with another cross lap joint that will be used to connect the lantern to the post. I'm using a little mini Japanese 45 degree angle plane to get some chamferization happening on the awkward edges of these blocks. They leave a little bit of a dirty mark on the edge but I uh, clean them up with a bit of sandpaper. Then I force them a bit to recess in the bolts so that I can bolt up through the supports and into the base of the lantern. I didn't have long enough bolts on hand otherwise I wouldn't have needed to have gone quite so deep with the forcing bits. Loosely bolting these in place to uh, hold them together while the glue dries. Now to one of the hardest parts. I'm using a combination here of a card scraper and various different types of sanding pads to get right into the corners and sand everything down to 240 grit. And also did the same for the window frames, using smaller pieces here just to get in amongst those slats. Blow off the extra dust and then it's time to hit it with some finish. I'm using an outside furniture oil from a local Australian company and now's the time for my favourite cheesy joke. What type of cheese do you use to hide a small horse? The second most satisfactory part of this entire project, second only to my cheese joke, is the application of said finish. I applied a coat, let it soak, rubbed it in and applied more coats on top. At the last moment I decided to glue the side windows in place, leaving only the front and back to be uh, removed by magnets. 
So a little bit more blue tape to protect all the areas that will need to be glued from the finish. And then I went about finishing the rest of this project. And while I'm applying the finish, take this opportunity to ask if you have enjoyed watching the video, please uh, consider subscribing. I don't make many videos, and after the last one I had a lot of uh, interest, so it showed me that people are interested in what I'm doing, and I'll quite happily make more going forward. I left the top rafters unfinished at this stage, and any part where I still need to glue, like the front facades, I can come back and finish them later once everything's glued in place. Here I'm pre-drilling some pilot holes on the edges of the roof and on the sides of the ridge cap uh, where the copper nails will go through copper sheeting that I'm about to apply. This is the first time I've ever used copper sheeting and I'm probably doing everything wrong here but I'm using a strong contact adhesive to join the copper to the wood directly. I applied the bottom sheet first and then just overlapped a little bit as I worked my way up using some tin snips to cut off the edges as I went. I left a small piece untouched at the top and you'll see why soon. Then it was just a case of tapping the nails into those pre-drilled holes through the copper and holding it all in place. Applying a thin bead of glue to the top of each of the rafters, spreading it out nicely and then applying the roof on top. and holding it down with a bit of clamping pressure. Yeah, a lot of clamping pressure. So here I've used a combination of glue and sealant, the glue to bond the two wooden pieces and the sealant to create a seal between the two copper pieces. Probably a bit of overkill. And again, a little pressure to hold them in place until they dry. Once everything was dried, flip it all over, and now I could go and finish the undersides of the rafters and the underside of the roof itself. Finally, time to attach the facades, and this should actually create a secure bond between the roof and the framework or the structure of the lantern. And again, beautiful finish. I'm so glad I took the extra time to add those edges to the facades. So I picked up this solid Merbau post off Facebook Marketplace and set about trying to cut in a recess that I could attach the cross piece, the mounting piece that the lantern will sit on. I used a circular saw first and then a chisel to cut away the pieces. and cleaned it up with a Japanese pull saw.
Then I was on to enter Sandman again, and I left the bottom part unsanded um, because I did add a rot resistant paint to the base. This is the part that will be buried inside the ground. Dale dug a hole. Like the time I dug a hole. Start of the patio. I think I chose the hottest and most humid day of the year to dig a hole and I only got about 600 mil down before I hit a water main. But I wanted to see what this looked like upright so I went ahead and dropped the post in the hole and let it sit on the water main. Also gave me a chance to finish the post itself and the cross piece before assembling it all together. This is when I went and got the plans and realized that if I moved a, a few meters to my right, I would have a better spot. So I dug another hole. It was still hot. And you don't need to see me digging this one. You can just trust me. I dug another hole. I got about 300 mils deeper and I was able to put it in the ground. After finally placing the lantern on top, I gave it a quick bolt down from the base. and got to see what it finally looked like in the setting sun. Now earlier on I installed a small hook on the inside so that I could hook a light and this will actually be powered by a solar powered LED light. Uh, for now it's just a battery operated one just to see how it looks. So with that magnetic window taken off I've placed the globe inside, turned it on and put it all together and see what it looks like. And if you can't tell here, I'm pretty proud of what I've done. And that is my Japanese lantern. I hope you enjoyed. Please come back soon and see what I do next. Wow. Arigato.